Hey everyone, it's Mother's Day. Miss you guys. Hope uh, we get to be together soon. Uh, no new updates on the school, uh, when we can be back in church. Uh, don't have any further Royal Family Kids Camp updates, just that you can stay in prayer, that we'd be able to do something for the kids later this summer, hopefully a few day camp or something like that. Uh, update on the Jillias, they're still doing well. Uh, family is doing great at home and we're super excited about that new addition to our church family. Uh, you could be in prayer for Gino. He found out that they, where he's living, they may have, the family may have contracted uh, COVID-19. Um, there's no test, so I think they're probably just sick but he's concerned about it and potentially going to uh, quarantine for 14 days uh, away from there because he, he lives in a he lives in a room uh, above the garage and uh, shares a bathroom uh, with somebody who might be uh, ill also so uh, not wanting to contract it himself he's trying to figure out what to do so you can be in prayer for him uh, it is mother's day we are so thankful for our mothers Hopefully, I'll be able to spend some time with my mother today, uh, at least uh, on FaceTime, and say hi. Uh, her flowers are currently residing in my uh, kitchen, and my wife is enjoying them right now, so it's kind of a win-win for me. Uh, wife gets to enjoy mom's flowers, and then mom gets to enjoy mom's flowers. Uh, so, again, uh, it's Mother's Day. We're so thankful for all of our mothers and all these sacrifices that they do continually, day in, day out. Uh, for all of us, and because it's Mother's Day, I I wanted to I wanted to look at five characteristics that uh, our mothers, uh, hopefully our mothers and good and good mothers, uh, have these attributes, these characteristics that we can learn from as Christians, as Christ followers. And the first one I wanted to talk about is to begin with the end in mind. Uh, good mothers begin with the end in mind. When, when babies are born, uh, we see this bundle of joy with tons of potential. And it is a mother's job to extract that potential. To, and it's a father's job. It's a family's job. It's, it's all of our job. But mothers primarily play a special role in the raising and rearing of children and uh, growing them and extracting those potentials out of their life. When a mother has a child, she has incredible dreams for this child, uh, who they might become, what they might be, uh, what they might accomplish in their life. And it's the work of being a mother uh, that is used to extract those gifts, to see that ball of potential turn into uh, a fully functioning human being. See, the work of being a mother is developing another human being's God's given gifts into a fully matured human. Fully matured human. And in like mothers doing this in, in physical children's lives, we also do this as, with our spiritual children as, as Jesus followers, as Christ followers. We uh, are to be discipling others and teaching them and extracting the potential that God put in them uh, as a believer and as a follower and as a human being. So it is our job to be uh, molding and shaping people uh, constantly uh, as, as Christ followers. For some women, with uh, some of their children, it's harder than others because uh, some of them are kind of like me many times. They're numbskulls. You know, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> we don't get things the first, second time, or maybe sometimes even the third time. You may be a mom right now at home thinking, is my child ever going to get this? And I say, yes, they will get it eventually. Uh, so stay in there. You may be saying the same thing of somebody you're uh, helping learn to follow Christ. Maybe saying, are they ever going to get this? And the answer to the question is, yes, God is working on them. Even when you don't see that work happening. Uh, the second uh, characteristic I want to talk about is being selfless. Mothers are, uh, good mothers are almost completely selfless. They give up sleep. They give up their own ambitions. They give up a lot of things to be able to raise children. And as disciples of Christ, we're called to lay down our lives for uh, others for the gospel's sake also. The Bible tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And then in Philippians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 3 
through 5 and verse 7, it says, In relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And then good mothers are selfless and good Christ followers are selfish, that we live our lives for the benefit of others in raising them, helping them be nurtured, and, and helping them become fully devoted followers of Christ. So again, thank you mothers for uh, being a model of selflessness to us. The third attribute I'd like to talk about is unconditional love. And this is a love that's difficult to understand uh, of our Father God until you've had children because something changes in you when you have kids. You, you very quickly feel like your life is made to be in service for these children. Um, and as Christ followers, our life should be that way too. We should very quickly, as we're raising disciples of Jesus, we should be able to see that our lives, our gifts, what God's done in our life is for the benefit of others um, in, in living that out. And, but without love, it's hard, if not impossible, to be in a lopsided relationship. Um, for many of us, it, children being in this relationship, it's a lot of give and not a whole lot of take. Um, raising spiritual disciples, raising, uh, teaching people to follow Christ, a lot of times is often a lot of give and you don't necessarily get a lot back out of it at first. And uh, learning to have un unconditional love is what keeps us able to stay in the relationship so that we can continue giving and continue nurturing so that that potential is eventually reached in a child's life, in a disciple's life. So that third one, love unconditionally, is an aspect that we all should be striving to grow in. You and I should be learning to love better by using our lives to serve others more unconditionally. See, if you, if you don't love your child, they can be very annoying, uh, the, nagging. Uh, if you don't have that love for them where you can look past that and know like, oh, they're just hungry or, oh, they're just tired or whatever that is. If you don't have unconditional love that grounds you, uh, it's very difficult to continue to stay in process with people while they're in their own process. The third, uh, I'm sorry, the fourth attribute that I would like to talk about is patience. Uh, I know my mom has had tons of patience with me. Hopefully, uh, she is seeing the fruit of her patience and the fruit of that fruit of the Spirit in her life. And like many other mothers, good mothers are patient and learning more patience all the time. You think, wow, how much more patient can I be? And the answer is always a little bit more. As we help people understand who God is in their lives, just like mothers uh, learning to uh, see the potential in their children and, and wait for that to come out, that, that time where you don't know whether it's really ever going to happen. I think they can get this, but I'm not sure. Just as uh, mothers do that with their children, we should also do that as people who are leading others in this journey of Christianity, uh, that we've got to be patient with people, uh, not accusing them or giving up on them or throwing in the towel too early because God is working in their lives and in our lives and oftentimes using them to grow patience in our lives. So this fourth attribute of patience is one that we can all take from our mothers, uh, good mothers, that allows us to see more of a reflection of who God is in our lives and who he's calling us to be for the benefit of others, for the benefit of the kingdom, and uh, ultimately for our own joy. The more patient I become, the more joy that I actually find in my life. And I think that is true of most mothers also. And the fifth one, this one is uh, easy to overlook oftentimes. The fifth one is to enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. We're in this life together. Mothers are uh, start from you know conception and then birth and then just feeding and changing diapers constantly. Uh, and if you live in the moment, if you if you are always stuck in uh, the 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 micro minutes, you will not be able to experience the journey as a whole. You won't be able to experience what is so beautiful about being able to 
contribute to another human being's life. See, good mothers enjoy each stage of life of their children for different reasons. One of the things that Janie and I often do is we've got a photo feed in our phones that all of our photos that we take goes into the same one. We can see them constantly. And sometimes we'll just sit on our bed at night and we'll go through the stages of each of our children's lives. And we get to look back and laugh and, and miss actually some of those things that were frustrating about our kids. We get to miss them because we miss that, that, that way that they were, um, not that we want them to be that way anymore, but it was, it was actually cute when you weren't caught up in it and frustrated by it in the moment. So enjoying the journey uh, is, is very important in uh, enjoying our own journey. Enjoy the journey they're on and being a part of it, coming alongside them. And as Christ followers, as Jesus followers, the same thing is true of spiritual disciples, spiritual children. You, it's very easy to become frustrated when somebody isn't getting something very quickly, but it is also entirely rewarding. And I can think of several in our church family who um, I've invested in and you've invested in and you've encouraged and I've encouraged and we've all encouraged and we've seen their lives being transformed time by time. We loved them in each of those moments, but it's really beautiful to be able to see, step back and see the process of what God is doing. So like mothers, enjoying the journey and the process is super important. See, the skills good mothers have, we can learn from to help us be better disciples of Christ and disciplers. Uh, those things are that we are really spiritual parents, like a spiritual mother or spiritual father to people who are learning to love God and learning to serve others. So mothers, as we look to our mothers and we're thankful and grateful for all that they've done to sacrifice today, they can also be a very fantastic example of how we should emulate their lives and model their lives as we uh, live in discipling new people into this relationship with God and building the kingdom of God. Mothers are a great example to each and every one of us on how we should live our lives in service to our King, in service to those around us. So today I want to take just a special moment and pray over mothers for a moment here uh, and, and take a special moment to realize the gift of motherhood, what it means to all of us, how we've all been shaped and molded and prayed for and cared for by our mothers. And I pray that we would uh, share those sentiments with our mothers, with those women in our lives, be it our natural mother, our birth mother or not, that have uh, effectuated the growth of our lives. Uh, the, they've prayed for us when we were running astray. They've loved us unconditionally. They have been selfless in their life again. All these characteristics and aspects of motherhood uh, translate directly over into raising spiritual children. So I hope taking a look at that today uh, is a way that we can celebrate motherhood and our mothers and also learn what Christ is calling us deeper and deeper into in building the kingdom. So let's, let's pray if we can. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for each of our mothers and where our mothers were absent or missed the mark. I thank you for women and men who have stepped up and filled those roles, who have stepped into the void and who have made a difference in our lives. God, for all the mothers today, I pray a special blessing, blessing of new patience and selflessness, um, of new joy, of the ability to look back on and see what they have accomplished in service to you and in service to others. I pray that their lives would be filled with joy as they uh, look and see how the moments that they created for us, how they mattered in shaping a new generation of children to continue to grow the gospel, to love new children, to raise grandchildren. God, we are so thankful for our mothers. We're so thankful for our grandmothers. We're so thankful for our spiritual mothers. And today I pray, God, that you would just reach into their lives and bless them, fill their minds with beautiful memories, uh, fill their minds with new understanding 
of their roles in others' lives, in their children's lives, in their spiritual children's lives, so that they today, on Mother's Day 2020, would be full. They would be full and satisfied. So we thank you for everything that you're doing. We pray that we would learn to be better Christ followers as a result of watching mothers and how they relate to their children. I pray a special blessing on all the women that are mothering in our community, in our church, that they would that they would uh, continue on in raising beautiful children, a new generation of children who are going to grow your kingdom and grow your church. We're so thankful for our mothers. We pray, pray blessing on them today, and we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Now, before we leave, I want to, uh, before we turn it over, I want to say we're, we're planning another Zoom call this week, probably Friday, so check your email for that, likely 7 o'clock. I'll get that on the calendar. And then lastly, I want to leave you again with this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace in these days. Friends, I love you. Uh, thank you so much for staying in this. I want to encourage you. And um, as we begin to venture out into society again, be safe, encourage others. Uh, represent Christ well in the conversations that you have. And hopefully very soon we'll all get to see each other again. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.